Hello everyone and thank you for being here. Welcome back to part two of the first day of the 2021 Alliance meeting. I am sad that we're not in Basel, Switzerland right now, but I'm so glad we can be here together virtually. My name is Marcela Santos. I'm the volunteer psychologist from the ALS Association in Colombia, ACELA, and a board member of the International Alliance of ALS MD Association. I will be your moderator for this final section of today. If you missed it, earlier today, we had some fantastic presentations that included the results of the Alliance's Fundamental Rights Survey, as well as a wonderful experience workshop from our friends at SMA. Be sure to go back and check out the recordings of those sessions once they are available. Hopefully, you had a chance to acquaint yourself with this new online platform. For those of you who weren't able to join us earlier today, I will give you a quick overview of some of the features we have available this year. Thanks to the generosity of our sponsors, Biogen and Apelis, we are able to offer translation services this year. To access this supportive option, click on the show captions button, which is located below this video. You can then use the menu to select which language you would like for captions. Even the English captions can be helpful if English is your second language. You can even turn off your sound if you like and read along with us today. Thank you again to our sponsors, Biogen and Apelis, for allowing us to offer this service. As I mentioned, we are using this virtual event platform for the entirety of the Alliance's 2021 conference. You will want to have it open in Chrome browser and use a laptop or desktop for best results. This platform also has a number of accessibility features. If you move your cursor to the top right of the screen, you will see a symbol that looks like a little person in a circle. It is the third closest symbol to the right. If you click the drop down, you will find adjustments that may make your experience more comfortable. I also want to talk to you about some of the networking options we have available. You may have noticed that there was a session before we started today called Global Cafe. This is a place to hang out before the meeting start and join a table to make new friends, reunite with past ones, or discuss trends in our community. Later in the day, you will see we have more networking as well. The networking later today will work as facilitated tables and will focus on three different topics, caregiving, communication, and technology. To join these networking tables, you will need to click on the sessions tab in the menu on the far left, navigate to the networking knowledge tables, session and then select which table you would like to join. This session will take you to a Zoom meeting, so please ensure you have Zoom on your computer today. We also have some fun features such as a virtual photo booth, which I've seen some of you already took the photos, that you can take advantage and take a photo and share it with the rest of the attendees or post on your own social media. Don't forget to use the hashtag ALSMND without borders to be shown on the timeline of the event lobby. Also remember, you can write on the lobby chat between sessions or further engage on session chats. This is a great way to connect as if we were together and to post thoughts or questions during sessions. If you have any questions or need assistance at any time, please click text support button on the left-hand side near the bottom of your screen. One of your event staff will be happy to support you. Now onto what we have in store for you today. today First, we'll start out with five fantastic presentations, followed by four, a short 15-minute break, and then we will end with the day with four equally amazing presentations. If that sounds like a plan, we can begin. So to start off, off, we have Lauren Webb discussing online interactive decision support resources, my ALS decision tool. Take it away, Lauren. Hi, my name is Lauren Webb and I'm the Director of Support Services and Education for the Les Turner ALS Foundation. For all the upheaval and tragedy caused by the pandemic, there is one remarkable silver lining in the ALS community. Services previously inaccessible to many are now available online. Our vision for an online interactive decision support tool became a reality when we received seed funding from Cytokinetics Communication Fellowship Grant and a generous uh, donation from the Gilbert and Jacqueline Fern Foundation in 2020. Here are my disclosures for this talk. The Les Turner ALS Foundation is one of the, the largest serving independent ALS groups in the US. 
Our development of a decision-making tool is based upon the insights gained um, by our nurses and social workers during ALS care visits. As a result, we have developed and refined best practices for decision-making in partnership with the multidisciplinary team at Les Turner ALS Center at Northwestern Medicine. We also offer support group meetings, educational materials, uh, webinars, and access to medical equipment and communication devices and need-based grants. We help families confidently navigate the challenges of living with ALS and help people every step of the way to make decisions. The objective of this presentation is to illustrate the use of shared decision-making tools as an essential component of ALS care. My ALS decision tool is the first of its kind in the US over the last two years, we have collaborated with people living with ALS, caregivers, a health literacy technology company, international researchers, health professionals to create a new interactive shared decision making tool. The low levels of literacy impact access to health care and have a negative impacts on the out, on health outcomes. The health literacy data map designed by one of our collaborators at Northwestern University shows a pictorial representation of the scope of the problem. The areas in red have lo low levels of literacy. We see health literacy as a tool to address health equity. You can visit the site and zoom in on different states, counties, and neighborhoods. The U.S. Center for Disease Control issued new uh, definition of personal health literacy for or, and organizational health literacy, which emphasized people's ability to use health information rather than focus, rather than just understand it, focus on the ability to make well-informed decisions rather than appropriate ones, and incorporate a public health perspective, and acknowledge that organizations have a responsibility to address health literacy. From a health perspective, these definitions indicate that people and organizations can use their health literacy skills to improve the health of their communities and its members. On the slide are a list of helpful resources to better understand how to write, how to write from a health literacy perspective and has action plans. We used a software called Readable to upload our resource guides and to obtain health literacy scores. Uh, grade level and to rate the tone and sentiment. We dramatically altered the tone of our educational materials by just writing the word you and, and by just using the word you and wrote from the perspective of a person living with ALS. We also split up long sentences and added bold points and hired a graphic designer with extensive experience in creating health literacy materials. Dr. Ian Hojan, a senior lecturer at, in, at Australian Institute of Health Services and Management at the University of Tasmania, introduced me to her online decision tool while attending the International MND ALS Symposium in Perth in 2019. Her framework and guidance helped inform the development of our tool. Without her, um, it, her help, it was just remarkable, the connections um, and the information and, and the access to literature and new ideas. It really helped transform the way I thought about multidisciplinary care um, and shared decision making. She also told me about the work that the folks in the UK are doing um, for testing a decision aid for feeding tubes. Decision support tools are useful for people who are having difficulty uh, deciding whether to go ahead with a treatment or not, um, or, or to be choosing from uh, one treatment or another. Unlike uh, guides, shared decision tools prompt users to think about what matters most to them. Shared decision tools are an essential component of patient care, patient-centered care. By, we believe by empowering people with ALS to make early and informed decisions about their care, the tool can transform and help improve health outcomes and reduce the caregiver burden throughout the ALS journey. We reached out to Jeremy Van Tress, a person living with ALS who recently completed his PhD dissertation on resilience, self-determination, and decision-making for life-sustaining treatments. This is what he said. Your work is very much aligned with some of my recommendations in, I made in my dissertation. I certainly think an interactive decision tool is the best way to go for better patient outcomes without increasing provider workload. This needs to get done. I'm so glad you're working on it. Drawing on the work of researchers who have published on decision making in, the AL, in ALS and MND, we knew that we needed an interactive tool in the US. Again, the purpose of decision support tools are to simplify complex medical decisions, 
gauge a patient's understanding of their options of accepting or declining treatment, uh, clarifying patient preference and values related to care, address health inequities um, by, by using best practices for health literacy and facilitate conversations between patients, family, and multidisciplinary care teams. We partner with Communicate Health to develop our online interactive tool. Communicate Health builds vis uh, accessible and, visual and visually appealing products to provide access to health information that's easy to use and understand. Each product they develop, whether it's a fact sheet or video or social media graphic, um, or a digital application is created and met with a specific health need in mind and designed with a priority audience and follows inclusive design principles. They work to ensure that the ALS decision tool is accessible, empathetic, easy to understand, and designed and tested with people who use it. And so this is our, uh, the development process that we followed. So let's go ahead and take a look at the non-invasive uh, ventilation decision tool. As you go through the tool, you'll learn about non-invasive ventilation, answer a few questions to help you think through what's most important to you, and get ready to talk with your ALS care team about your options. Communicate Health conducted user testing and provided us with a summary. When asked to describe the tool, most users, um, most users participants use words like informative, well laid out, and clean. The tool provides multiple options or paths and it puts the user in control. The ability to receive information about managing ALS symptoms and care, respiratory care or nutritional support based on responses to the assessment. One participant exited the tool by selecting no on the do I need um, NIV in the future. Um, and then she exited the modal. And this participant noted that she did not need uh, NIV right, right now, but would likely visit the tool in the future to learn more. And so this was really important for us as we um, were designing the tool. We wanted to make sure that people had the ability to um, receive as much information or as little information as they wanted to. Um, we also had a the skip um, to questions button as an option where people could really walk through and think through what the benefits are um, and the and the 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 um, disadvantages are for them. So on this page uh, where where participants are asked to select um, what types of benefits um, do they see and that are important to them with using this tool after they've received some education. Um, and some participants said they like being able to select the benefits that matter to them, noting that the selection made the tool feel more personalized. Again, um, the whole focus is to really put people in, in control and, and to help them uh, feel uh, that and regain that sense of control. And a, a woman, a family member of a person living with ALS uh, wrote, people with ALS must feel like they're losing control. So important to be in control of your treatment. We have a quick recap session section which displays benefits and disadvantages that the user selected from the previous screens. Some participants said that they would share the quick re recap content with their ALS care team to have additional discussions. For example, one woman um, wrote uh, that or during the testing um, said that she would use this section to talk with her uh, care team that she would have, was worried about um, having trouble breathing, but she was also worried about the cost. And she had said, is this something you guys could help me with? And this is an opportunity to have additional discussions on insurance coverage, um, and um, as well as uh, providing links for additional educational materials. So again, we'll be launching uh, two decision modules one on non-invasive ventilation um, and another on feeding tube in 2021. Both have uh, revamped resource guides and webinars as complementary resources, and we plan on launching additional tools next year. My ALS decision tool will be available on our website for you to share. Complementary materials um, uh, to the decision tool, along with the webinars, documents, and videos are listed here. We uh, redesigned six of these uh, guides and um, they are all revamped it to reflect the patient's voice and are visually appealing and easy to understand. The role that the foundation's education services have had in improving the quality of life and outcomes is testament to both the dedication of our support services team, 
and Northwestern uh, Medicine, as well as to many of the people living with ALS who provided their input and feedback. We had 28 people living with ALS um, and caregivers who designed and tested the guides and the decision tool, um, as well as 34 clinicians, researchers, um, support service team members, designers, who all were um, instrumental in helping to transform our educational um, approach. And it took us two years to develop and secure funding for the community education uh, program. Some important lessons learned uh, uh, from our work with Communicate Health, we learned about accessible design in the broadest sense of the term, um, whether someone's using an eye gaze or the uh, colors, um, a, a lot of, of things go into accessible uh, design as well as uh, creating empathetic language and, and really focusing on, on the words um, to ensure that it's clear and easy to understand um, and following best uh, health literacy practices. Um, the most important thing um, that, uh, that we learned is that designing and testing with people who use it. We've I learned so much from the people who um, provided their red pens uh, to us and it really was um, transformational and it was a community effort. And, but it, one of the other really important points um, of, of this talk is that we had organizational commitment to health literacy. And this was a collaborative effort across all departments from uh, development uh, support services, our CEO, Andrea Pauls Backman, uh, her her red pen uh, is is fantastic, and I was very grateful for that um, at many points uh, along the line, um, as well as the team from ALS um, from the Les Turner ALS Center at Northwestern Medicine. We also had an intern, uh, Kelly Randall, who um, produced three of the different guides and and worked and and ran a project for her occupational therapy dis, um, uh, uh, capstone project. We also um, realized that it was really important and that we needed to focus on pr prioritizing promotional efforts. So much energy went into building of the tool and getting the words right and having the appropriate links. And we realized we now need to pivot and really look at promotional efforts and how to um, promote the tool with people living with ALS, caregivers and other healthcare providers uh, and coordinators to act as intermediaries so they can introduce the tool to others. Um, so we would we would love for you to to share the decision uh, tool with the the folks that you work with. So I think that the big lesson, the big take home here, and that I learned from from Ann Hojan and and others is that shared decision making tools are an essential component of a patient centered care. And so as we all continue on this journey together, um, there's new ways to innovate and really to help families living with ALS uh, make uh, decisions. Here are some of the references. And thank you to people living with ALS and MND and their families. Thank you so much, Lauren, and the ALS Turner ALS Foundation. What an interesting tool you just shared with us. I love you thought about inclusion and accessibility and thought about an inclusive design. And while we wait for some comments or questions, from our audience. I would like to make some myself if you don't, if you don't mind. Sure. Okay. Did you have any cases where either the PALS or COWS were in denial of the diagnosis of ALS MND? And if so, did this tool overwhelm them or actually help them? Well, we, when we were doing user testing, it was uh, folks who agreed to, to participate uh, in, in the testing. So we weren't really testing to see if there was denial according to the diagnosis. Um, but I, I would say that it was really helpful that one, one that I showed of the woman who um, clicked off that she didn't have those symptoms. I think this tool is also very helpful with symptom identification, especially with respiratory issues um, as well. But that is something, an area that I know a lot of our international colleagues are looking at um, the role that um, you know different emotions go into playing with making decisions as well as cognitive issues um, and how that impacts. So there's a whole host of ways that um, folks make decisions and um, we wanted to be able to provide a tool where the person living with ALS or MND um, are in control and can make those decisions. So that's a really a uh, great question, because I think that that will require further probing um, and better understanding 
um, of utilization and we'll, we'll have more lessons learned as our team begins to roll out this tool. Great. Also, I like the feature of skipping questions or quitting the survey in case, in case they weren't ready. Uh, that actually goes along with the question I did earlier about denial or maybe you don't want that much information. Um, how do you manage, uh, do you have results of how many people actually quit the survey or like skipped questions? What were the tough questions? Yeah, yeah. So we're we just literally. Um, I think I would hit the button to to tape the video and to send it. So we are just now launching. We were a little bit behind when I wrote the abstract. Um, so we'll we'll have some more of that data to take a look at and to really dive into in the in the coming um, years because I think that will help inform us. Um, and I know some of our our UK colleagues are really taking a very intensive look at at how that works. And what that looks like um, for them and, and their decision making process. I know that they were working on it um, as well. And so I think that's a big portion of it. We have another question in the chat. Lauren, how universal are the questions versus US centric? So I think there's a lot of, um, I think one of the important pieces around decision making tools is that, um, that it's written in, in the way that um, the, the country's practices are, right? And what, what the access to different types of equipment. Um, I think the, you know, the universality of, um, you know, standard of care um, guidelines um, uh, are um, important to, to look at, but we also know that there's different utilizations across, you know, in the U.S. and different regions. Um, so I think that it's, it's written, um, you know, uh, US centric, but I think there are other opportunities to look at it and adapt for different um, different countries with uh, their different frameworks for, for doing it. Um, you know, we, we worked with the Australian model and adapted it um, to, to meet our needs. It would be amazing to have that worldwide. We have a question from Rodney Harris. Uh, does the tool remove the use of professional skills and knowledge from patient care and increase risk of professional responsibility? I don't think it removes. I think it's it's meant to really help um, guide um, and help prepare. So kind of level the playing field. So that way, you know, people are well equipped to have conversations with their uh, physicians um, and their multidisciplinary care team. I think the really important part of what makes a tool different than a guide is that it really we probe to ask what matters to them. So that way it really gets to the heart of what, what are the you know, objections to XYZ treatment. Um, so what we're doing right now, we have a feeding tube and we have a NIV are the two modules that we just launched. Um, but I, I think that um, it's really meant to um, drive conversations, not to replace, but I think it it can offer a bit of time savings, um, you know, from educational perspective in a very busy multidisciplinary clinic um, to be able to have that, that engagement. Yeah, especially that not all medical staff knows a lot about ALS. Like not everybody has ALS clinics, especially like here in Colombia, we don't have those. So th this would be a very useful tool not to um, take the job of professionals, health professionals, but, but it will help the patient a lot. We also have a question from Wendy Abrams. Excellent new tool. Question, will the home team support staff help patients use this tool and help patients respond to it? And once it's done, will it be given to their physician? So yeah, hi, Wendy. <laughs> it's so great to hear from you. Um, yeah, so, you know, we are uh, working with the team. We just uh, launched the, the tool. Um, and so we'll be incorporating um, the tool in our conversations with families and, and use it as a preparatory tool. Um, and we will also be working to ensure that, um, you know, that, that families have access to it. So there is an option where families can print um, the tool, their responses uh, to the tool, or they can screenshot it, um, the recap, and that can help drive some of the conversation um, with, uh, with the clinicians. Um, and Marcella, to your point, I do think that, you know, this is a nice opportunity to be for those places where there isn't multidisciplinary clinics to really help drive the conversation together. Um, because I think, you know, there's a lot of skilled pulmonologists out there who might not be connected with an ALS clinic, but who might, you know, have that, that relationship or that experience. So being able to drive that conversation can really help um, ensure, ensure quality and access 
for, for different individuals. Okay, and last but not least, we have Lane Olive. I think you already kind of responded to this, but uh, I would like to, to, to do this question. Beyond uh, IV and the feeding tube, are you looking at any other treatment areas? I would love for folks to put in the chat what their ideas are. We have, you know, our running list of what. So please, you know, uh, what tools tools you're you're thinking about um, needing. I know we have identified um, some end of life um, issues as as a you know an opportunity to really have a meaningful impact. Um, but I would love to hear from the international community about about what your thoughts are. Um, and we'll be um, exploring and evaluating after we uh, launch the, the tool, we'll be evaluating what our next steps are for 2022, which is so weird to say, and <laughs> I can't believe, I can't believe it's uh, been almost a year. So um, thank you for, for inviting us to talk and, and um, we are really appreciative of this opportunity. Um, and I can't thank you enough. Thank you, Lauren. Also, Andrea Pauls Backman just said, Lauren will demonstrate the tool at a webinar on 16, December 16th. No, so please don't her. forget to register. <laughs> if you just sent us the link, both yeah. in the question Q&A and the chat. So please, if you want to more know about the tool, like Sarah just asked, uh, you can just register on that link. Thank you, Lauren, so much for your time and um, your disposition. I love this tool. I'm so happy we're working toward making quality of life and decision making easier for the Paul sand calls. Thank you very much to the last uh, ALS uh, Turner Foundation.